Civil War, the film is out. Yes, my friends, there's literally nothing else happening in the world except for potentially World War Three as a threat of attack from Iran is imminent, says uh, the White House. But, uh, you know, we're, we're more interested in movies. So we're going to talk about this instead. Here's a story from The New York Times. Civil War review. We have met the enemy and it is us again. Rotten Tomatoes gives the film 83 percent. And uh, you can only guess what that means. Basically, everybody knows tomato meter is inverted. If tomato meter is if the tomato meter is good, it means the movie sucks. And if the usually it's like the audience score will be high and the tomato meter will be bad. I have a feeling when the audience score drops for this film, it will be bad. But for those unfamiliar, this movie is about a team of journalists that are traveling on a road trip to make it to D.C. during the Second American Civil War. And there's going to be spoilers in this segment. But we'll start a little bit light and show you uh, uh, before we get into it. But rest assured, within like five minutes, we're going full hardcore spoiler because of the political ramifications and the cultural significance of how a movie, and I'm going to outright say it, an anti-Trump film masquerading as not anti-Trump. How does a movie like this get made? What are the perspectives of people in industry? And why, why is this their worldview? I think that matters a whole lot. So we're going to spoil the film. And uh, if you want to see it, you know, that's that, that you've been warned. You may remember this. This is a map that was published on X. I don't know if it's the official map, but I believe it is. And this this came out around December and we talked about it. It's the A24 Civil War 2024 Divided America map. You can see here the Northwest and parts of the uh, Midwest are called the Western Forces. You have this strip to the center of the country called the Loyalist States. You have the Deep South called the Florida Alliance. And then you have the Republic of California and the Second Republic of Texas. You can then see that Alaska and Hawaii are considered loyalist. However, A24 released an updated version of the map where you can see the Western forces became California and Texas. The new People's Army is the Pacific Northwest and parts of the Midwest. The loyalist states remain the same. Florida Alliance remains the same. But then you can see Alaska is polar bear cold state. And uh, that is significant. That, that, that is only somewhat slightly relevant to the film, but they they did seem to change it. So the first thing I want to say is, uh, and I'm trying to go slow with the spoilers because I don't want to just outright spoil everything, but anti-Trump film, uh, Trump is the bad guy. It's very obvious that Trump is the bad guy. The movie's not about Donald Trump or a civil war. It's about four journalists on a road trip. So understand that it's about four journalists on a road trip. And uh, these two maps, the reason I showed that first is because it appears the film, cha- I think I think they were seeing all of the commentary online and they decided to change the film midway through th- in editing to change the story out of fears. What they were producing was overtly partisan because it's it's I would say it's 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 partisan when you watch it. If you know anything about politics, heavy, heavy political influences, very obvious political influences and certainly a political perspective there. They don't outright say it, but it is apparent. I think uh, in the trailers, you can hear them say the Western forces are approaching D.C. Well, back when this map came out, that meant Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, right? And uh, the Dakotas. And then, of course, Minnesota is a a mixed bag and the Pacific Northwest. It's still largely right leaning. Now the film is the Western forces are California and Texas, which makes very little sense. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pause there and let, you know, Ian and Serge chime in on this one a little bit, too. But uh, as a journalist watching a movie about journalists in conflict, what I really appreciate is how they captured the malice and depravity of journalists. It was it was absolutely and <laughs> I, 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 I'm not being I'm not being cute when the journalists are smiling and laughing at the bloodshed and the gunshots and the gore. And one of the main characters is like, I have such a hard on for this. I'm like, this is what they do. This is what I witness when I'm on the ground being like, this is a, this is horrifying. People are, are being shot at. I can't believe these things are happening. Some people need to know about this. I'm watching these other journalists be like, what a great networking opportunity to meet other journalists. Man, were you there when this happened and this happened? And I'm like, these people are sick. So I actually really enjoyed it. But uh, I'm curious your, your guys' thoughts if you want to chime in before we go heavy on the spoilers. You want to lay into it, Serge? Um, I mean, like, what, what was something you liked about the film? What was something you liked? I really about the like film? the settings, the scenery. So, I, when I look at a film, I look at there's the theme of the film, there's the plot, there's the there's the setting, 
and then there's like spectacle. This thing was spectacular in the sense that it's beautiful settings, beautiful sceneries. Yeah. They're driving from New York to, to Washington, D.C. They go through America. You see all this beautiful, beautiful stuff. And that's about it. Um, I really liked some of the acting. A couple of the scenes I thought were really good. And there were a couple of really power. Well, there was one. In, the action scenes were intense. But I found it to be very, very thin on plot. I didn't. Mm. It was nothing. Yeah, we talked I about that. Nothing to be happening in the movie. I was just I think, waiting uh, for something to happen. I think. I was the, like, when does this movie start? Like twenty minutes in. The 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 worst part is when uh, a Democrat governor uh, is 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 rappelling down from a building upside down and then kisses Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, that was. Beautiful. I'm kidding. I just stole that super chat from uh, who is that? Spider Man. Deseret Rebel said, "Does Kirsten Dunst get an upside down kiss from Newsom at some point?" Uh, no, <laughs> she doesn't. Uh, I yeah, just, so so what we're hearing from a lot of people online is that it was slow and boring, mm -hmm. and for me, I it was actually it was cathartic because there's like the basic premise is this like grizzled forty something year old journalist who's like really jaded meets this uh, young girl who like twenty three year old who wants to be a journalist, and then they end up tagging she ends up tagging along, and she's like, Ugh, why is this woman coming with her? They they come to uh, we're getting into spoiler territory. They come to a gas station where looters have been strung up but are still alive. And the 23-year-old uh, doesn't take any pictures or do anything. And then in the car, starts breaking down and crying. And Kirsten Dunst goes, oh, God, she's crying. And I was just like, yes! Ah! Oh, I know that feeling so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, like, do not... I, I have complained about it so often when companies would send me out to, to urban conflict. And they send you with these people who have literally no idea what's going on. And then they're just fumbling, tripping, causing problems. Uh, when I was in Venezuela, gunshots ring out, like people are running and screaming. I run west from the crowd. The as I yell run to my crew, they don't follow me. And then I take cover behind concrete and they they, they run over, what, what, what's happening? And I was like, what? And they're like, what are you, what's going on? I'm like, did you see the National Guard with rifles and the people running screaming? Um, and, and I was like, we're going back to the hotel, we're done. I'm not going out with you guys ever again. And they're like, what, why? And I'm like, I am not going to stand there as you guys stand in the line of fire and don't move. And that, and then I have, I have a human responsibility to save your life. If you do not have the experience to be in conflict, I am not going to go out with you. I will not condone this. You go do whatever you want. I'll do my thing. But fortunately, they accused me of being a spy and I had to flee the country <laughs> well. by seven in the morning. I think... <laughs> That was a plot hole for me. Like, why would they take that girl in the car in the first place? That's like a hard. They, they, know, did, bring it, some they did explain rookie. it. They did explain what, it. That he that he I, I'm about to spoil the entire movie. Just we're, so we're, you know. we do. Let's let's let's, <laughs> let's start. We'll start with the hard politics before we get into heavy plot points. So but the reason they bring this young girl, they reveal halfway through the film that the the Florida based like Latino guy was drunk and trying to have sex with her. Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They made the guy the weak, the beta, and they made the girl the alpha. And then <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I disagree with that. You, you, the guy Kirsten Dunst was like the alpha of the no, movie. No, 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 way. no. She breaks so. down and she's falling on the ground right. and he's trying to drag her. And when there's in the distance, I, I look, I a lot of people are saying the movie was slow and boring and, and not worth seeing. I still think it's worth seeing because I think the movie's gonna give some people perspectives on war and conflict yeah. that they wouldn't normally have thought about. Yeah. Right. But uh, they're sitting, like they're, they're, they're camping out of their van and you can see tracer rounds flying through the air. And he's like, let's go. And she's like, we're not going anywhere near that. And, and then he was like, but come on, you feel it, right? And she's like, when the sun comes up. And he's like, I have such a hard on for these guns. So, yeah, he was insane and depraved. Yeah, they made him kind of look like a, bar a brute barbarian idiot alcoholic. And then she was the one keeping it all together and the leader. But then she breaks down partway through. And then the young girl becomes the alpha. Well, all right. All right. Uh... We've waited long enough. Boogaloo boys are directly in the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boogaloo boys actually are depicted relatively well, in my opinion. Uh, Antifa is made reference to, but we don't know whether or not Antifa are mass murderers or were massacred. We don't know for sure. Yes. Uh, the president is Donald Trump and the heaviest spoiler of them all. I just said I wasn't going to do the heavy spoilers. So I'll, I'll save the big heavy spoilers. We'll start with the political stuff. <laughs> so I'll, I'll pause right there instead of doing were the, the Boogaloo's. Were the, were the Boogaloo boys really that they, well? They, they, they weren't they named. Did. Yes. They weren't named. They, they weren't named, but they also, oh, those shirts. are the Boogaloo boys. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but what they did still, they weren't, they weren't like the best light they could have been. No, I thought, I thought they did a good job. Uh, what, what, what makes you think they, they depicted the Boogaloo Boys poorly? Well, then if I say anything, then I spoil. 
as right. well. Okay, well they boil, they executed boil. those soldiers after the, after they had finished that that battle. They didn't need to do that, but I guess they just did it anyways. Uh, fair point. Fair that's, point. That's the, it wasn't it wasn't cast them in an overly overtly good light. They were still there. They were still doing things. They were making but, it look but, be bad. I don't think. I, I wouldn't look at them killing captives as mm -hmm. like malicious evil. Yeah, yeah. No, it's understand. it's war and yeah, they're totally. not, and they're taking no prisoners. Still, totally. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That was that was fairly bad. They did. They didn't include that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so one of the first scenes you encounter, and this is funny because I'm reading all the reviews and they're like, it's an apolitical film, and I was like, really? And then as <laughs> yeah. soon as they come across, so this is like they're like, oh, there's shooting. Let's go check it out. They're journalists. And the Boogaloo, uh, they don't, they never say Boogaloo boy. Uh, there are guys in Hawaiian shirts with armor and gear. Yeah. <laughs> shooting at soldiers, military. You can tell who they are. Yeah. And I'm, I was just like, no way. I'm like, this is overtly political. They, 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 they're in uh, Pennsylvania when they come to a location where military, it appears to be military, have pinned down Boogaloo boys. The Boogaloo boys, I thought, were depicted well in that, uh, it, I think it represents like their combat. They're, they're people who train with guns. Yeah, totally. And they allow journalists to film. Yep. They're 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 moderately like anarcho libertarian types. And then uh, the the scene is after the firefight, the uh, Boogaloo boys infiltrate the building with the press behind them, and then enter the room and they hear a guy moaning and screaming as he's bleeding out, and oh. then they capture and execute the remaining soldiers. Mm -hmm. he goes, yeah. No. Hit <laughs> Yeah. Him. So, I, well, the one thing I will say, uh, this movie was made by liberals who think yeah. they're neutral. There's not a single instance where they encounter any leftists. Nope. They encounter rednecks. They encounter racists. The president is Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. The the elite tactical force that that moves in to to take D.C. is <laughs> it's very it's, diverse. Yeah, it's very diverse. <laughs> and I don't want to be like a dick, but it's just like, look, man, you're there's. A lady Navy SEAL being deployed by a, a powerful military faction to take to, to the most like I don't believe currently in, in, in the world there is a high likelihood chance that they will have women deployed as special forces on the most high priority missions. Yeah, and I'm not trying not. to be a dick, but you no, know what I mean? Small, like, come thin. on. No. She was a little thin girl. Like and, she wasn't a big, strong, bulking woman. Yeah. And she all. executes a negotiator. So I was kind of like, well. Yeah, like <laughs> biggest for me, I think the, the cheapest part of the movie after <laughs> all was said and done is that the president is in the White House <laughs> in the middle of a civil war. He's just sitting at his desk yeah. like he's not in a bunker. The administration's all just chilling at the White House. It's the dumbest I, writing I've seen in a long time. Who wrote that? Yeah, because uh, Bethesda and 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 um, Mount Washington. What is it? Mount? No, no, no. Mount Weather. Is it Mount right? Weather. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, come on. Like even the publicly known emergency bases are still under loyalist control, according mm. to this map. That was ridiculous. All right, but now I'll give the big spoiler. Now that I've given you fair warning, uh, the movie starts with the Donald Trump character, and it's so obviously Donald Trump for a variety of reasons. Nick Offerman is in the film for 15 seconds. No joke. He's got probably 20 seconds of total FaceTime and an additional like five seconds of voice voiceover time. Wild how, how little he's in the movie. I mean, maybe, maybe it's an exaggeration. I think the movie starts with maybe like 20 or 30 seconds of him talking. And then he gets maybe like 15 seconds at the very end. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. starts with him saying, we're on the verge of a great military victory. Some say the greatest military victory <laughs> in military history. And I'm like, we get it. It's Trump. The journalists yeah, say things obvious. like, you're going to DC. Are you crazy? They're, they treat us like the enemy there. You'll be shot on sight. And I'm like, oh my God, we get it. <laughs> and then you got these critics being like, it's totally apolitical. Of course, uh, when Trump becomes president, he'll launch airstrikes against American citizens, disband the FBI, and then kill journalists. Yeah, they say disp he disbanded the FBI. And had movie. three terms. There's well. no drones in the movie. It's really, Zero. really poorly written. It, it, like they, it's like an idealistic movie from like, because technically the movie's supposed to take place in like 20 years from now. If the main character was at some sort of Antifa, that's what she made her fame Antifa with, massacre. Like, with an Antifa massacre. Yeah, they leave that in the US. You don't know which so side. Kirst Kirsten Dunst's backstory is that when she was in college, she got an a quote epic photo of the Antifa massacre. So they're not taking any video. Nobody in the in the movie takes video. They all just snap still <laughs> photographs, and no, there's no drone warfare at well, all. To be it's fair, like they some can't really film anything. In a jet or two, or they can't no. they can't charge anything though. To be fair, but they don't have gonna... solar powered chargers. I've got like four. She, no, 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 she still uses her phone in the movie. Yeah, yeah she's got her digital point. camera. 
And they say there's no service. There's no reference. There's only one reference to currency. And oh, it's yeah. only that U.S. currency is worth little, but yeah. still still worth something. Uh, there's no, th like, the one thing I can say of this movie is that this guy was like, what if there's a civil war? I should talk to some journalists who cover war. And they went and found some like 60 year old guys who covered war 40 years ago. And one of the things we talked about this yesterday, I think they really missed the mark is they did not involve the international community it, with one iota. It was all insulated Man. within this walled United States as if there was no outside influence. Like, dude, China would be the Western forces. This uh, would have been no, Chinese I, I, forces. I somewhat disagree. You don't think so, man? Yeah, China, so they'd be all over take, the take, United take, States. So here's, here's where it gets interesting, right? In the trailer, they say the Western forces are just outside of DC or whatever. And originally the Western forces was the Pacific Northwest. In the new map they released, that's called the New People's Army. In the film, they call those Portland Maoists. Yeah, they mentioned Maoism. They mentioned Maoists. They, so when they make reference to that faction, though, it appears that they're saying communists take over the northwest of the United States. But I mean, and they say Maoist, so it sounds like Chinese influence. I, so think, I don't think it completely excluded. I think in a real, more realistic scenario, you'd have like Chinese jets and like uh, European tanks and things protecting the the capital. Why not drones? You'd have draws, tons and tons yeah, of drones. At, at that point, 20 years in the future, orbit, 20 you know? years in the future going the, the way we are right now, that'd be way bigger. Yeah, that's influence. kind of a 20 years in the future thing's kind of like a misstep on their part, I think. Because like, it seems like yeah. it takes place right now. It's it's definitely it taking place in the present. The movie, but without the movie takes technology. place in at least twenty twenty five. It's like when they make movies. I mean twenty forty five. Sorry, twenty forty five. If you notice when they when they developed cell phones two thousand six, they were making all these movies, but none of the characters had cell phones because they didn't understand like how they didn't have the creativity to write that right. new tech, and they couldn't have the 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 suspense of like how do I get my message to my person because I got to get to a pay phone and like in the yeah. Matrix, and it took them like a decade to catch up to how to start writing cell phones. And a lot of movies will be like, leave your cell phone before you enter become a character in our movie. Like they have to put their cell phone away before they enter the venue where the action takes place or stuff like that. There was one early exception. I think The Departed was 2007 and they explicitly made cell phones act like weapons in that movie. Score says he said he wanted the, because he, he recognized the technology and how dangerous it could be. And every character in that movie is like they're battling with cell phones. That was that was a very early example. But for the most part, yeah, you're right. I think they're doing that with drones here. I'd like to see a movie that understands drone warfare a little bit better the horror of like an artificial intelligence taking over like mm. one of these factions could have been an artificial intelligence that would have been no. cool. yeah. yes but if we're if you know th so this guy in 2020 starts writing a film called civil war and the conversation around a potential civil war in this country started a long time ago i mean first of all there was a civil war in this country but uh, it was like 2017 and 2018 people started talking about because of donald trump the potential for civil war yeah, and I, and I believe that a part of it was to not only predict something that is likely to happen, I think, much less than 30 years from now, but also in the same effort to, to delegitimize Donald Trump. I think right. it was like a sort of the immunity system in place. Uh, what if Donald Trump wins again the election? And it was written in, uh, before, right, 2020. So uh, I think it's actual now as we're heading to 2024. But already at the time, uh, the risk of Donald Trump being confirmed uh, as president of the United States was huge. So we have this uh, highly politicized, uh, overtly politicized uh, movie, which is not uh, like, uh, of course, they're making up that it's neutral, no, it's not. <laughs> you, you just mentioned how they uh, give the president as speaking exactly like Donald Trump. A journalist ecstatic about giving the most sensational news We like, uh, you know, like, uh, vultures basically on the set and uh, this is a sad reality and the, and then all these minorities that are in the movie that just represent how they polarized america uh, playing this identity policy all over biden presidency like trying to put one against the other uh, building up the idea of trump supporters like the white supremacists the racists uh, the people leading yeah. america into this uh, polarization that they created by the way there is nothing of that existing. I'm a minority myself. I'm an immigrant. I never felt uh, emboldened by being put in a case. Actually, there is no bigger recognition than being treated as an equal, like uh, actually on the right side we do. Uh, but here we go, like this extremely polarized world uh, heading to the de demon. They demonized Donald Trump. I think already in 2016, since 2016, all over his first presidency and up to now. So what more political than that? I remember when Trump got elected, he said something like right after he got elected about, I don't know if he said something racist or sexist. And then other people, it was like the floodgates were open. And then all these people started saying racist and sexist stuff online. And people were like, oh, white supremacy. Oh, no. And I don't know what it was like. He did give kind of a green light. Like, I'm going to speak 
derogatorily, that means you can too. Because before that, people just didn't talk like that. At least not that's on TV. That's not true. Not no. in public. <laughs> no. Not in public. You would get well, maybe not a ostracized. Stage. This is an not internet, in politics. This is an internet thing. It has nothing to do with and, and But then I think the media, a lot of people in the media blew it out of proportion and said like, oh my God, he's going to cause a race war. He's going to be a dictator. And yeah, they lied. Gonna, yeah, and, and they made it seem like and, he was going to cause some some sort of conflict. And this and is was like, what? I think this is the, the, the thing about this film is that it's liberals going like, wow, what if Trump really does get reelected? He'll have a third term. He'll kill Americans. He'll kill journalists. And the country will fall apart. And they call him a dictatorial president. It's very obviously Trump. And uh, I guess the final spoiler is, and I think it's fairly obvious based on the, it's like, if you watch the trailer, this is not a big spoiler, but they do kill him. Yeah, yeah, because he's sitting in the White House like an idiot. He should have been in a bunker. But is that come on. incitement? Is that incitement to kill the well, future president? I think so. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a far leftist, if you're Antifa and you watch that film, you're probably cheering the whole time. It's the first time. And if you love America, you are probably sitting there shocked and in disgust. It was, I was nauseated. It's the first time I've ever seen a movie where the U.S. president was a bad guy and gets killed on camera. I've never seen that. If you guys have seen a to movie, celebration and cheering of the care of the main characters who are happy it's happening. It's like a predictive programming thing. Like, are you saying it's okay? Like, what are you what are you insinuating here, guys, with this movie? Well, you you know that all the Disney villains uh, back in the day were British, right? Uh mm. okay. That I didn't know all of. I didn't know yeah, all of and them. so is the director of this movie, by the way, British. British? Yeah, yeah, really? of course he is. So what does he really know about American discourse? Oh, and the political okay. Part? You know, and well, it's it's funny because like they've the, people have asked him about like, isn't it? It's crazy that you have Texas and California like pairing up together. And his response is just like, no, they're they're pairing up against a fascist president. I mean, right. putting two yeah. states the, put their differences aside to when, defeat fascism. When you look at the original map, it was obvious it was meant to be like conservatives from the from the from Idaho, Utah, and Montana and Wyoming. And then they changed it with the new map to Texas and and for some California. reason, and the best we could have come up with is because they wanted to make it seem nonpartisan that California and Texas could work together against the greater evil. Um, but I don't know if that someone came in from the outside and they're like, "You guys, you can't don't make it the West versus the East. Just make it like the bad guy versus everybody else." Let, let, I want to stress that too. Like, you you get that movie, what's it, White House Down or whatever it yeah, is, yeah. And it's like all the movies that we have are the the president is the good guy, the president is under attack, the Secret Service have to save him. In this movie, it's quite literally an external faction attacking the president and the Secret Service, and you are the characters you're supposed to be cheering for are happy it's happening. So it's quite literally like the United States is the bad guy, the president is the bad guy, and the president must be killed and stopped. And when they like in the end, they like Man, I guess we spoiled enough of it already, so I'll just tell you. But right before they kill the president, the main one of the main characters says, "No, I need a quote." And then Nick Offerman's like, "Don't let them kill me." And he goes, "That'll do." And then they kill him. And it's just like so the like I felt like the bad guys won watching that film. Yeah. Like, like it, it it the movie to me felt like communists attacked the government and won. The movie to me is most likely on, on a probability line of the, the liberal view is that Trump gets elected. Tr uh, there's resistance and, and revolt and riot and stuff like that. Trump gets elected to a third term at some point to stop riots and rebellions or whatever uh, orders uh, airstrikes. In the beginning of the movie, a, a person carrying the American flag suicide bombs a bunch of people trying to get water from an aid truck. <laughs> That's really like it's awesome. very like it's 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 very subtly like if Trump wins, this is what he will do. He will kill journalists. He will kill you. His mm -hmm. supporters will do this. The journalists only ever encounter deranged, quote unquote, right winger types, uh, rednecks who are who are a holes and, and beating up looters and killing them yep. or racists who are murdering minorities. Yep. And then in the end, they're like. The orders are to kill the president on site. That's what, in the movie they say that. A few things that I think it did well is that they captured how some people are just still living their lives as if it's just not going on. They're just going about their, their business in that some I parts liked. of the country. That was pretty cool. And it also captured the chaos of the actual conflict when you don't know who's who. You get shot at. You're, you're just shooting back at whoever's shooting at you. And I think it also... Um, what were you saying, Serge? The, the, it really just it highlighted the horror 
the absolute devastating horror of a, of a situation like that. But I don't even think it took it far enough because there was no foreign interference. Like we would just have the, the, the UN would take over the country if we tried to, if, if we, the only reason we haven't been invaded is because of our national unity. So if that, if we lose that, it's all, it's all well, over. I disagree. It's because there's a gun behind every blade, blade of grass. That's a, I mean, it's a metaphor, but. It, what would actually happen is China would go to West Coast states and say, we'll provide any support you want. Yes. Have fun. Tanks and things like that. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.